This is Wally the Terror Bird, and we're going to tell his story. Our story begins 62 million years ago on the island continent of South America. The KT extinction event has occurred 3 million years prior, and all of the dinosaurs have disappeared, leaving a void for new apex predators on Earth. Due to the continent's isolation, evolution took a different route, allowing terror birds to dominate. So what made them so special? Terror birds belong to family Phororacidae. These carnivorous birds evolved into 25 species throughout their time. These bipedal and flightless birds had long legs, long necks and big heads which supported long hooked beaks used for tearing flesh. They were the largest carnivorous birds ever recorded and were found all over South America, with fossils mostly found in Patagonia and Argentina. These birds ranged from 1 to 3 meters in height, with the tallest being Kalenkin, which weighed up to 300 kilograms. Naturally, creatures this big would have been immensely powerful predators, so depending on the species of terror bird, their diets varied, with small mammals and marsupials making up the majority of their diet. Due to their small wingspan, terror birds were unable to rely on flight. To compensate, they had long and powerful legs. Variation in size indicates they ranged in hunting styles and prey. However, their speeds would have varied per species. Based on fossilized leg bones and the estimated musculature, it has been theorized that, for example, Mesembryornis were able to reach speeds of up to 95 km per hour. However, in comparison to modern animals, this estimated speed is unlikely. The terror birds generally lived in a mosaic of habitats where both open grassland and woodlands were present. The larger species would have hidden in the tree line and waited for an opportunity to strike. Some, in an effort to catch their prey in order to kill them, would have used their legs as weapons to either debilitate the prey or to grab it in their sharp, talon-like claws. Some of the quicker individuals would have run down their prey, while the slower, heavier individuals would have implemented ambush tactics. Based on scans of fossils recovered, the beak was the main way of killing prey. Terror birds used their hooked beak to make stabbing motions downwards. These beaks were hollow in order to facilitate communication between individuals, but they were very strong, allowing them to repeatedly stab their prey. Elements of their skulls were fused together and therefore acted as a shock absorber in these instances. Some species are taught to pummel their prey into death by smashing them into the ground. They would have used their hooked tip of their beak and their claws to dig into flesh and pull it back into edible chunks. This type of behaviour is very similar to modern day birds of prey such as eagles and vultures. There is no definitive reason for the extinction of the terror birds, but one thing is for certain, the Great American Interchange was an important factor. Four and a half million years ago, due to plate tectonics, the Isthmus of Panama arose connecting North and South America. This in turn led to the exchange of mammals from North to South and vice versa. From North America came tapirs, deer, saber-toothed cats, raccoons, bears and canids. From South America came marsupials, ground sloths, glyptodonts, and only one species of terror bird, Titanus walleri. Fossils of this species were found in Texas and Florida, and they grew up to two and a half meters tall. While they were able to survive in North America, they were eventually outcompeted by saber-toothed cats and wolf-like canids. These predators would eat the eggs and the young of the forest racids, causing their numbers to fall and their habitats to open for new species to use. Titanus walleri most likely went extinct after the Pliocene Ice Age. Climate change and competition led to its decline and eventual extinction. In South America, terror birds persisted for a longer period of time due to their tropical habitat. However, climate change and the formation of the Andes led to the creation of habitats that were not compatible with terror birds. Tropical rainforests and deserts overtook much of the grassland habitats that terror birds thrived in, driving them into environments they were not accustomed to. The last known survivors of the forest racids was the genus Psylopterus, which went extinct 96,000 years ago. Only two modern relatives remain, red-legged and black-legged Cerebrus, which belong to the order Caryomiformes, the same order as the terror birds. Between 70 and 90 centimeters tall, they are close in size to smaller terror birds, such as Lalawavis scagliae. Cerebrus can fly short distances, but they mostly walk or run. They still live throughout South America in varied habitats such as grasslands, savanna, dry woodland and open forests. These birds prey upon a variety of different animals such as reptiles, insects and small mammals. And unlike terror birds, they use their feet to grip their prey rather than killing them. 
They also smash their prey against the ground and tear it apart with their claws and beak. This kind of behaviour could be similar to smaller species of terror birds. The larger species were probably more like modern day ostriches, which are today's largest flightless birds. Unlike terror birds, they are not solitary hunters and are largely herbivorous. While their behaviour is quite different to that of terror birds, ostriches use their wings for balance and it is likely that terror birds did also. The speed of larger terror birds may have been comparable to ostriches as well, as they can reach speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. Terror birds were unique because they were the only examples of flightless birds becoming apex predators. They could have radically shaped the evolution of Cenozoic South America, but we still know little about their behaviors and way of life. One thing is for sure, these gigantic, nightmare-inducing birds are better off. Thank you.